the Gospel of John, chapter 1, John 1, 1, KJV. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, John begins his Gospel with the same three words that are used in Genesis. In the beginning, the Word, this is a personification of the Word, Logos in the Greek. The Word was with God. Genesis 1, 3 and Colossians 1, 13, 18. The Word was with God. In the beginning, the Word was God. 1 John 1, 1. John 1, 2 to 4. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The same was in the beginning with God. The Word Jesus Christ was there with God the Father in the beginning of creation. All things were made by him. The word made all things, and the word is a person. He is defined as male, him. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Psalms 33, 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. In him was life. They could have eternal life because of him, Christ, the light of men. Jesus shows mankind the way because he is the light. John 8, 12, KJV. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 14, 6 KJV. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 1 John 5 KJV. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. John 1, 5 KJV. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The light, the word Jesus Christ is being identified by a new title, the light. Jesus is the light of the world. John 8 verse 12. The darkness, a place without spiritual illumination, people without truth. John 1, 6, 7. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. A man sent from God whose name was John. John came to the nation of Israel as a witness. Malachi 3, 1 KJV. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. K3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. A witness. A witness must have seen or heard something, and you must share that with others. John was sent by God after he had heard from God what he must do. The light. Then one day John fulfilled his purpose of being the witness to Israel at Jesus Paul. Baptism that Jesus was the Christ. All men through him might believe, all in Israel might believe that Jesus was their Savior. John 1, 8-9 KJV, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The true light. John clarifies it by stating that John was not that light, but that he came to bear witness of that light. John came to bear witness of Jesus Christ. Notice that the word light is capitalized denoting Christ's deity, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Isaiah 49, 6 KJ. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. John 1, 10 to 11, KJV. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Jesus was not recognized as the creator when he came. Colossians 1, 16-17, KJV. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He was not recognized by the nation of Israel as their savior. Luke nineteen fourteen. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, 
We will not have this man to reign over us. John 1, 12, KJV. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as received him, he was recognized by those who had ears to hear and eyes to see. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. These received power to become the sons of God, which is a future possession for them not like it is for us today. Israel gets their sins blotted out at the onset of their kingdom. They have the remission of sins until the day of atonement. Acts 3, 19 JV. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Today we have total forgiveness of sins at the moment we believe the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. To them that believe on his name, Israel had to believe in those days that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16, 6 JV. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And John 16, And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. John 1, 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. To be born of God is a supernatural birth that occurred for them when they believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. 1 Peter 23 KJV. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. John 1 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. Jesus is the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us, Israel. Galatians 4, 4 KJV. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. From this verse, we learn that Jesus, the word, did not exist in a flesh and bone body prior to his incarnation. This occurred at his conception, not his birth. And dwelt among us. God dwelt among Israel for 33 and a half years. He was Emmanuel, God with us. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. We beheld his glory. John was one of the ones who saw Christ transfigured before him with the glory that he would have when he reigns in his kingdom. Matthew 17, 1-7 The only begotten of the Father. This is a reference to his resurrection from the dead, not his birth. Psalm 2, 7 KJV I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Acts 13, 33 KJV. God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son, full of grace and truth, verses 16 to 17. John 1, 15. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Jesus was born six months after John the Baptist, and he began his ministry six months later, verses 27 and 30 below. For he was before me. John testified to Jesus' preexistence by stating that Jesus existed before him. Colossians 1, 17. Jesus was born according to Luke 1, 26, 36, six months after John the Baptist, but he has always existed as the word throughout eternity. John 1, 16, 17. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He came to bring a prophesied grace to Israel in her kingdom. Colossians 1, 19, KJV. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. 1 Peter 1, 10, KJV. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. 
who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. The law was given by Moses, Exodus 20. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. There is a prophesied grace that is to come in the kingdom. Verse 14 above and 1 Peter 1, 10. John 1, 18, KJV. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. No man hath seen God at any time. Exodus 33, 20. The only begotten Son, he was begotten at the resurrection. 1 John 4, 9, which is in the bosom of the Father. Like Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom after his death, so was Jesus in the bosom of the Father at the time John wrote this gospel. No one hath seen God the Father in all his glory and lived because of our sinfulness. This corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality before we can stand in the presence of God. 1 Corinthians 15:53 He hath declared him Jesus Christ is the only one who could declare who God was because he had been with him in eternity past. John 1, 19 to 21, KJ, and this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Priests and Levites, Levites were descendants from Levi, one of the twelve tribes, A priest had to be a Levite, but a Levite did not have to be a priest. They could serve the Lord in other functions. I am not the Christ, the anointed one. Art thou Elias, Elijah? Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet, the prophet before the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord. Art thou that prophet? A reference to what Moses said in Deuteronomy 18.15 which is a reference to Christ and not Elijah. Deuteronomy 18, 15 KJV, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. John 1, 22, 23. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as sayest. Isaiah 40, KJV. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Verse 23 is not talking about Elijah, who is the forerunner of Christ at his second coming. What Elijah does is recorded in Matthew 17, verse 110, where it says he restores all things to Israel in the tribulation period. Elijah is one of the two witnesses that comes back in the tribulation period, and the other one is Moses. Not Enoch, who is a Gentile. John 1, 24 to 25, KV. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet, the Pharisees? They believed in the resurrection from the dead and angels. They were the straightest sect in all of Judaism, which knew me from the beginning. If they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Why baptizest thou then? They wanted to know why John was baptizing if he was not the Christ nor Esaias, Elijah, because they were the only two that had authority to baptize the nation of Israel. They did not ask, why are you baptizing when we are the only ones that are supposed to be baptizing? That is because the Pharisees were not baptizing anyone. They performed diverse washings, but that was not what they were asking about. They knew that only Christ and his forerunner were supposed to baptize the nation of Israel. They did not understand the difference between Christ's spirit baptism and Israel's water baptism. They were performing diverse washings that were given to them by Moses in the law. The Sadducees would have cornered the Pharisees and would have asked them why they were baptizing if they were not the Christ or Elijah. If the diverse washings were considered as baptizing, they were not. Hebrews 9, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of reformation john 1 26 27 kjv john answered them saying i baptize with water but there standeth one among you whom ye know not he it is who coming after me is preferred before me 
whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. John tells the Pharisees in Matthew 3, 11 at this point that Jesus' baptism is not of water, but that he will baptize Israel with the Holy Ghost, the saved, and with the lost. Matthew 3, 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John does not record what Matthew said word for word because all four gospel writers are writing from different perspectives. Who coming after me is preferred before me. Verses 15 and 17 above. John is pointing out that Christ is more than just a prophet baptizing in the wilderness. John 1, 28. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Judges 7:24, KJ, and Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, "Come down against the Midianites and take before them the waters unto Bethabara and Jordan." Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Bethbara and Jordan. John 10:40 KJV and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized and there he abode Jesus is baptized. The Gospel of John leaves out the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist, which was the most unique baptism ever performed, and it goes directly to the following day after Jesus' baptism. John 129, KJV. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The next day This a reference to the next day after Jesus' baptism by John. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, verse 36 below in Isaiah 53, verse 7 to 11. John 1, 30. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Verses 15 and 27 above. John 1, 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. I knew him not. John knew Jesus. They were cousins. He also knew that Jesus was the one his mother Elizabeth and his aunt Mary said would save the world from their sins. John had not yet seen the required sign from God, however, to identify him as the Savior to Israel, that he should be made manifest to Israel. John was to make the Messiah known to Israel only after seeing the sign that God gave to him that would occur when he baptized the Messiah. Verse 32, the sign, John 1, 32-34, KJV, and John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. He that sent me to baptize with water, John was sent to baptize with water, all in Israel that had repented. John 1, 6. His baptism was called the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Mark 1, 4, KJV. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Luke 3, 3, KJV. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, Acts 19, 4, KJV. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. That was the sign John was to wait to see, so he could announce him as the one who would baptize Israel with the Holy Ghost. The same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3.11 and Acts 1.8. This occurred on Pentecost. Acts 2.1-18. The Son of God is the second person of the Godhead Trinity. Colossians 2, 9 and 1 John 5, 7. John 1, 35 to 37. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. The next day after, after the baptism of Jesus and two of his disciples, one of them was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, 
verse 40 below, the Lamb of God, John could not pronounce Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world until he saw the sign of the Holy Spirit descending upon him as a dove at his baptism. The very next time John saw Jesus, he could begin to tell everyone, this is the Christ, and his disciples then became Christ's disciples. Notice that John called Jesus the Lamb of God, not the sheep of God, because God required a lamb of the first year be offered not a full-grown sheep. Exodus 12, verse 5, Hebrews 10, 3, and 12. John 1, 38, 41, KJV. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak, and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messias, which is being interpreted the Christ. Where dwellest thou? The Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Matthew eight nineteen and Luke nine sixty one. The tenth hour, this would be around 4 p.m. or two hours before the end of the day, which ended at sunset. We have found the Messias, which is being interpreted the Christ, the Anointed One. Acts 10.38, John 1.42, And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Thou art Simon the son of Jonah. Simon is called the son of Jonah on numerous occasions. His brother Andrew is never called that because Peter and the prophet Jonah have some interesting similarities. Both are sent to Gentiles one time and reluctantly go after refusing what the Lord wanted them to do initially. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. He is not the rock or Petra in the Greek. He is also called Peter the first time in Mark's gospel, Petros, a rock, but not Petra the rock. Christ is the rock mentioned in Matthew 16, 18, that the Messianic kingdom church was built upon, not Simon. He was given the keys to the kingdom, however, and he does have a leadership role in the kingdom. Matthew 19, 28, John 1, 43, KJV, the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, follow me. John 1, 44, KG, now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter on 12, 21. John 1, 45 to 46, KJV, Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Philip and Nathanael both were not the most well-versed students of the word of God, or else they would have known Micah 5, 2, which stated that the Messiah comes from Bethlehem. If they had been well-learned, they would have also known that the prophets taught that he shall be called a Nazarene, according to Matthew 2, 23. Matthew 2, 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. We have found him of whom Moses and the prophets did write, Deuteronomy 18.18 18 and Micah 5.2. The saying, he shall be called a Nazarene, is not written anywhere in the Bible. It does say in Matthew 2.23 above that it is that is that which was spoken by the prophets. Not everything that was spoken was written down in scripture, but Matthew adds this because it was passed down orally from generation to generation. Israel's prophecy program consists of everything either spoken or written by the prophets since the world began. Our mystery program today consists of those things that have been kept hidden since before the foundation of the world, mentioned in 1 Corinthians 2, 7. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, they supposed he was the son of Joseph, Luke 3, 23. Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? 17 times the words good thing are used together in scripture. Jeremiah 33, verse 14. John 1, 47, KJV. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. An Israelite indeed, a saved Israelite. Psalm 32, 2 KJV. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile, in whom is no guile. Jacob beguiled his father into giving him the blessing, but later his name was changed to Israel because his heart had changed. 
Genesis 32, 28, KJV. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Nathanael is a type of the 144,000 in the tribulation period, as they are the only ones besides found with no guile in them. Revelation 14, 5, KJV. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. John 1, 48, KJV. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Whence knowest thou me? How do you know me? When thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Jesus saw Nathanael supernaturally with ever having been there. The fig tree is a type of Israel's religion. John 1, 49, KJV. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. All Jesus had to do is tell Nathanael something no other man could tell him, and that was something that Jesus could not have possibly seen. Nathanael knew that anyone that could tell him what he was doing when no one else was around had to be the Son of God, the King of Israel. John 1, 50, 51, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Verily, verily, this is the first of twenty-five times that verily, verily is found in John's epistle. None of the other Gospels ever use verily back to back. The word verily is an English word used instead of the Hebrew word amen. The Greek kept the Hebrew word amen, and the English translated it verily. Every time verily, Verily is used together is because something very important is being spoken about. Ye shall see the heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. He saw two angels when Christ ascended into heaven. Acts 1, 9, 11. He will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man during the kingdom as well. See the story of Jacob in Genesis 28, 10 to 15. John 1, 29. The Son of Man, Nathanael called Jesus the Son of God, and Jesus turned around and called himself the Son of Man. He did not deny that he was the Son of God because he was. He wanted Nathanael and the Twelve to focus on what he was doing there as a man in their behalf. He took on himself the nature of man to be man's sacrifice as the Lamb of God. Hebrews 2.16 For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. The Gospel of John chapter 2 Jesus in Cana, John 2, 1, 2, KJV. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. The third day. In Israel, the days are numbered as the first day of the week, the second day of the week, and so on. This reference to the third day could also be a reference to the millennial kingdom. So far it has been almost 2,000 years, two prophetical days of 1,000 years each, since Christ rose from the dead. There was a marriage. At the onset of the kingdom, Israel will again be married to God. God divorced Israel because of her idolatry. He will take her back in the kingdom. Isaiah 62, 4 and Jeremiah 3, verse 14. Cana of Galilee. This is the Cana, which belonged to the tribe of Asher and Joshua, 1928. This marriage would have taken place on a Tuesday. Some people like to have their weddings on Tuesdays because it is the only day that God said that what he had created on that day was good twice. Genesis 1, 10 to 12. It could not have been the next day after John's baptism of Jesus because it was a three-day journey from there. There was also the 40-day temptation in the wilderness, which occurred in between, which is left out of John's gospel. John 2, 3, 2, 4, KJV. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. They have no wine. They didn't run out. They didn't have any to start with. Israel was not producing the right kind of fruits for God when Christ came. So Christ had to do for them what they couldn't do for themselves. Woman, what have I to do with thee? Jesus calls her woman to remind her that he must be about his father's business, not hers. Luke 2.49 and John 19.26. Mine hour is not yet come. Jesus was literally telling her, 
that it was not time for him to offer his blood for the purifying of the nation, which the wine, new wine, represented. Many of the events in Jesus' ministry were pictures of future events related to the kingdom that will come one day to the nation of Israel. This is the first of five times that Jesus tells his hearers that his hour is not yet come. John 7, 1, 9. Three other times in John's gospel, he tells his hearers that his time has come. John 4, 21 to 23, 5, 25, 28, 7, 30, 8, 20, 12, 23 to 27, 1, 16, 32, and 17, 1. John 2, 5, 6, KJV, his mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever unto you do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Man, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Mary never instructed people to do what she said, but she did say, do whatever he says. Six water pots of stone. Six is the number of man, and stone comes from the earth. The manner of the purifying of the Jews, it wasn't a coincidence that these water pots were used for purifying. They symbolized something bigger. Notice that some of the water pots had two firkins of water while others had three in them. They did not have enough to do the job. Man can never be purified outside of God's help. This purifying spoken of here is a tradition of men to make the outside of the person or cup clean, but it still left the heart dirty. Mark 7, 1 to 9. John 2, 7 to 10, KJV. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, than that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. The governor of the feast, the father of the groom, there is a marriage of the lamb in Revelation 19, 7 to 8, believing Israel is the bride and Jesus the bridegroom. Thou hast kept the good wine until now. Wine is the fruit of the grapes that grow in the vineyard. Israel is referred to in scripture as God's vineyard. And when Christ came, there wasn't any good fruit in Israel, but Christ produced good wine and his fruit remained and produced eternal life. Luke 13, 6 to 9 and John 6, 53 to 56. The wine is symbolic of sinless blood that he shed for the sins of the whole world. His blood would institute the New Testament with Israel. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. John 2, 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. John 4, KJV. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. This verse refutes the false teachings that Jesus performed miracles as a child. John 2, 12. After this, he went down to Capernaum. He and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. The first Passover, John 2, 13, and the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. The Jews' Passover, the first of seven Jewish feasts mentioned in scripture. Passover occurs on the 14th day of the first month of the year. Exodus 12, 128, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Capernaum was a city on the north side of the Sea of Galilee, which sat at 209 meters below sea level. It is the second lowest body of water on earth. The lowest is the Dead Sea, which is fed by the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River. Jerusalem's Temple Mount is 777 meters above sea level. So they were going up in elevation close to 1,000 meters by going to Jerusalem. Even though Jesus went south in direction, he went up in elevation. John 2, 14 to 16, KJV, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence. 
Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. He drove them all out of the temple. Why was Jesus doing this? He was getting all the leaven sin out of his father's house for Passover. Exodus 12, 15 KJV. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. He will two years later send Judas out of the upper room at his last Passover to go to betray him, thus cleansing that room of sin. My father's house, after Jesus has been rejected by the nation, he calls it their house. When Jesus came to the temple the final time, he no longer called it his father's house. Matthew twenty three thirty eight. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. John two seventeen. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Psalm sixty nine nine KJV. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. The sign of Jesus' resurrection, John 2, 18-19, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign shewest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. What sign shewest thou unto us? This is the first of many times that the religious came to Jesus, seeking a sign from heaven. Matthew, Wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. First Corinthians one twenty two. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Matthew twelve thirty nine to forty. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus gave them a sign they couldn't refute if they would only have ears to hear and eyes to see. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. See the three days mentioned in Matthew 12:40. Jesus spoke to conceal the meaning of his words to the religious, but he plainly explained things to his disciples. John 2, 20, 22, Ken said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, His disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Forty and six years was this temple in building. The temple spoken of in Daniel would take 49 years, seven sevens to build. The leaders intentionally left out that there was three years used for getting the necessary supplies to build the temple while the gate was being built. Daniel 9 verse 25 KJV. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. The seven sevens are seven biblical weeks of seven years each, as in the story of Jacob serving Laban for a week of seven years to obtain Rachel. Genesis 29, 27 to 20 JV. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. He spake of the temple of his body, 1 Corinthians 3, KJV. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered. The disciples were not trusting in his death, burial, and resurrection until after it happened. They did not even understand this until after the event occurred. And they believed the scripture. You can believe Jesus did miracles, and then you can die and go to hell. But the disciples believed the scriptures unto eternal life. Notice the contrast in the next verse. John 2, 23. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name. When they saw the miracles which he did, many believed in his name. They had to believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God in those days to be raised up at the last day and have eternal life in their kingdom. Matthew six fifteen to 16, KJV. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. John eight 
2325 KV. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you, from the beginning, John 2, 24 to 25, KJV. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them. They believed in his name after seeing miracles, but not in the truth of the scriptures that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. The Gospel of John chapter 3. Ye must be born again. John 3, 1, KJV. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. A ruler of the Jews, he was a part of the Sanhedrin, which was made up of 70 religious leaders, who ruled in religious matters in Israel. He was a part of the strictest sect in Judaism, a Pharisee. His problem was his pride. He wouldn't dare come to Jesus in the daytime because he feared the brethren more than he feared God. He feared what all his friends might think if they knew he had been talking to Jesus. If anyone confessed that Jesus was the Christ, they would be kicked out of the synagogue. Nicodemus would be removed from his position as a ruler of the Jews, the Sanhedrin, if they were to find out. John 3, 3, KJV. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again, this is mentioned in chapter 1 of John's gospel, as being born of God by believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was talking about a spiritual rebirth that he also elaborates on in the following verses. John 1, 13, the kingdom of God. This is a reference to the future kingdom that will be on this earth immediately following the time of Jacob's trouble that begins after the church is raptured. John 3, 4, KV, Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Nicodemus didn't remember what Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14 instructed concerning the issue of Israel being born of the spirit or born a second time, born again prior to her entering into her kingdom. They must be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. First Peter 1, 23 while they are still living. Those living during Christ's three and a half year ministry needed to trust in him as their Messiah before they died so they could enter into his kingdom at the resurrection spoken by Ezekiel. God is going to one day put his spirit into Israel's dried bones at the resurrection and they will live again a second time. John 3, 5 through 6, KJV. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Born of water, this is the same thing as being born of the flesh. Israel was born as a nation when they came out of Egypt and passed through the Red Sea. Of the Spirit, being born again is the same thing as being born of the Spirit. Israel will be born again as a nation in one day at the resurrection as mentioned in Ezekiel 37, 1-14. Notice that the King James Bible says that which is born of the Spirit, God's Holy Spirit with a capital S, is Spirit with a small s. John 3, verse 7-9, KJV. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Notice Jesus uses the wind to explain how a person under Israel's kingdom program was born again, or born of the Spirit. In John 20, 25, 10 of the apostles received the Holy Spirit ghost when Jesus breathed on them. The word spirit is the Greek word pneuma, which is where we get the word wind or breath from. 
you can't see the wind, but it is there just like the Holy Spirit, which also can't be seen. But he is there working. Anyone in those days who believed the incorruptible word of God was born of the Spirit by God's Holy Spirit. Nicodemus was still confused, so Jesus elaborated even more for him something that he should have known himself. John three ten to 12, KJV, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? A master of Israel, a teacher or rabbi in Israel. Nicodemus had not yet believed Jesus was the Christ, so it would be impossible for him to understand the deeper things such as being born again by the Spirit of God. John 3, 13 to 15, KJV, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. He that came down from heaven, Jesus is the Son of Man who came down from heaven. The Son of Man be lifted up, he must be lifted up on the cross. John twelve thirty two. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Since Christ is life, they had to believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, to be born of the Spirit. Once they did, they would all be resurrected to live forever on the earth in the kingdom promised to Israel. We, in the body of Christ today, are not promised eternal life on this earth. We will spend our eternity in the heavens, Ephesians 3, KJV. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. John 3, 6 to 18, KJV. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. His only begotten Son, the requirement for Israel to be born again of the Spirit, was to believe on the only begotten Son of God. Everlasting life, this is the first of eight times that John used this phrase. Matthew only uses it once, John 3, 9 to 21, KJV. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Light is come into the world. Jesus is the light of the world spoken about here that Israel as a whole did not receive. The religious leaders were keeping them blinded from the truth through their man-made traditions. John 3, 24 KJV. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison, and there he tarried with them and baptized. Remember, John was sent to baptize, and now Jesus' disciples are baptizing Israel with water. John three twenty five to 26 Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. The question about purifying had to do with baptism with water. We saw a story in Cana about water pots that were used for purifying. That was for the washing of pots, cups, and hands, as Jesus mentioned in Mark 7, 4-8. Israel's baptism was administered by both John and Jesus' disciples. Israel is to be a nation of priests, Exodus 19, 5-6, in the kingdom and every priest needed to be washed with water. They must also be healed of all their infirmities, for no one with an infirmity, blindness, 
deafness, leprosy, muteness, or demon possession could be a priest according to the book of Leviticus. That is why Jesus went about healing all who had infirmities in their flesh to prepare them to become a nation of priests to minister to the Gentiles in the kingdom. They should have known that Ezekiel spoke about God sprinkling Israel with clean water prior to their going into their kingdom, but they did not. Ezekiel 36 speaks of this, but when Christ came baptizing the first time, he only reached a remnant of Israel. When he comes back, he will baptize all of Israel, for all Israel shall be saved at the end of the tribulation period and enter into their kingdom. John 3, 27 to 29, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. The bride, they are asking John about all the people of Israel that are now believing in Jesus, and John refers to them as the bride. They are later called the little flock by Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. Luke 12, verse 32, fear not little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The bride, the lamb's wife, is the city of New Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven after the tribulation period and is inhabited by believing Israel. It is not our home. Revelation 21, 2 KJV. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The bridegroom, John, was saying he was sent before the bride, believing, believing Israel to prepare the bride for her bridegroom, who is Jesus. The friend of the bridegroom, John the Baptist, was the friend of the bridegroom, Jesus, who rejoiced greatly, or as he said, his joy is fulfilled when he heard the voice of the bridegroom. John 3, 30, 36, He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all, and what he hath that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure un- unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. This is a reference by John about himself in comparison with Christ, the bridegroom, who was from above. Whoever believes on Christ then in the tribulation period will have eternal life in the kingdom. Those who do not, whether they be Jews or not, will not enter the kingdom because they do not have the new birth by God's spirit, so they do not have life. Set to his seal to testify to something. If someone does not have life, then they will experience the second death, which is the wrath of God in the lake of fire. Romans 3, 4 KJV. God forbid ye let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. First John 1 John 1.10 KJV If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And hath given all things into his hand. A few of the things that God gave to Jesus are the twelve apostles, the Holy Spirit, which was not given to him by measure, and God's word to give to Israel. John 13, 3 KJV. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. (laughs) 